It's a dilemma we've all encountered. It's raining outside, you forgot your umbrella, and you need to get from a nice dry building to your car. In order to stay as dry as possible, should you run or walk? Running seems like a good choice. If you move quickly through the rain, there's less time for rain to accumulate on your body. But if you run, won't you be moving into more raindrops? It's not a trivial physics problem, and one you probably don't have the time to solve while getting to your car, so let's have a computer do the work. Here, we have a simulation of rain falling along a path. Your building is on the left side and your car is on the right. The two blocks are two versions of you trying to make it to the same car over the same distance. The green block will move at a running speed while the red block will move at a walking speed. This graph will show the number of raindrops that each block has encountered color-coded by block. As our travelers begin to move, it looks like the faster green block is collecting rain at a slightly faster rate than the slower red block, but remember, the green block won't be in the rain for as long as the red block. It doesn't take long for the red block to be pelted by the same amount of rain and he hasn't yet completed his journey, while the green block is already in the car with the heater turned on. With the speeds used in this simulation, the red block collects about twice as many raindrops as the green block does. The trend is even easier to see if we graph the number of raindrops versus the distance traveled instead of the time spent traversing the parking lot. The red block is definitely collecting more rain with each step because he's spending more time on each step. So it looks like moving more quickly through the rain is generally a better idea. Now, in order to get a more systematic answer, we'd have to run this program many times and take the average of the results, then vary the speeds of the blocks and repeat the process. You're invited to do so using the code in the description below, which also includes a series of videos explaining how the code was made and how you can use it. If you find an interesting result, please leave a comment below or tweet us at Let's Code Physics.